Hello and welcome to this special edition of the Belmont Journal. I'm your host, Mike Crowley. We are talking today about the Belmont Library. I'm joined in the studio by Kathy Cohane, Chair of the Library Board of Trustees, Claire Coburn, Chair of the Library Building Committee, and Brad Lewis, Chair of the Major Gifts Committee of the Belmont Library F Foundation. And so, well, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Very excited to be talking about the library. Can I, can I ask each of you to just tell me a little bit about your roles in the library and the building project, starting with you, Kathy? So, I'm Kathy Cohane, Chair of the Library Trustees and also a member of the Building Committee. As a uh, trustee, our role is to oversee the current operations of the existing library overseeing the budget, the policies, the staff, and ensuring that we're bringing the right services to the town of Belmont. On the building committee, I'll, I'll turn to Claire because okay. she can speak to the role of the building committee. So I'm the chair of the building committee. Mm -hmm. I'm also an architect, uh, Feingold Alexander Architects, uh, and uh, I've designed a number of public libraries. And I'm also a member of the, the Belmont Library Foundation. So. Okay. I'm Bradley Lewis, and I'm co-chair of the uh, Mage Gift co um, Committee, along with Marcy Hirsch. Um, and uh, we are, I'm very excited to be on board now. I've, it's been a few months for me, so I'm the newest to this gang, um, but having a great time. Um, and just really excited about the opportunity um, to work uh, and invest in the town and give other people an opportunity to make a difference in their town. Well, it's such an important project and, and actually a very exciting project. Claire, can you tell us a little bit about you know, where we stand in the process right now? So we just finished schematic design. So that's the, the early uh, a step beyond conceptual design. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives the, uh, the estimators some real design parameters to estimate fully the project so we have a sense of what the budget will be and we'll talk about that I'm sure later. Uh, and it also gives the town a sense of the project and what, what kind of features, what kind of amenities are incorporated into the design. Uh, so it's, it's an exciting process. We've never mm -hmm. been here before. Mm -hmm. We have mm -hmm. tried a number of times and this is the farthest we've been able to get. So. Uh, this has been a great partnership with the town that, that uh, provided half of the funding for this process. So. What, what are some of the, um, the, the really exciting features of the, the schematic design, Claire? It, how much time do we have? <laughs> well, <laughs> there's, uh, there's so many. Um, there's so many sustainability features mm -hmm. that I think people are really excited about, and I, I can go into those in detail. But the, the main thing that strikes me about the design team's work is that it's it's a very open, welcoming building. Mm -hmm. It connects really well to the street, but also to the landscape behind it. It it has opened our eyes, I mm -hmm. think, on the mm -hmm. committee to a whole part of the the brook, the Wellington Brook behind the the library. Um, it brings views in uh, into the library, creates a lot of natural light. It's just a really welcoming communal place. So uh, there are a number of amenities that we have in the new building that we don't have or we don't have a mu as much of that mm -hmm. we need right now. So the children's wing is a good example. We have a story a time area. We have a craft room now. Uh, there's just more space in general for the many programs that, that are held there. Okay. There's a stroller parking space. Uh, there's a, a lactation room for nursing mothers. Um, and there's even an outdoor space for uh, kids that's secure and protected. Uh, we also have a number of group study rooms because mm -hmm. we know that the, the pedagogy of learning has changed. And so there's more collaboration space uh, that way. So we have, I, remind me how many we have. We keep adding some yeah, because I think we have eight. Just, um, libraries, even new libraries add more in afterwards. So mm -hmm. we know that that is, is a desire. Uh, we have uh, a young adult space that's over double the, the size, I believe. Maybe mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm, a little yeah. less than double. But, and that accommodates, uh, the ad accommodates kids to meet them at their, their place of mm -hmm. just needing their own space. It might be a little noisier. It's mm -hmm. off from the, the quieter spaces, it's sort of segregated that way uh, for sound and acoustic reasons. We have a new uh, meeting room that is going to be able to accommodate performances. 
uh, that it will be about 50% larger than what we currently have, and we could have used that the mm -hmm. other night That's for our right. forum mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we were spilling out of the, of the doors on that. So uh, we have a number of features like that, and then we also have uh, amenities in the landscape behind. Okay. Uh, and we have, we were able to reduce the amount of asphalt that rings that currently mm -hmm. um, circumnavigates the building, mm -hmm. and we still have the same amount of parking. Uh, we have the wildflower garden is intact. Yeah. Um, so we, we have a number of these features, but overall I would say the biggest impact is to me, I guess, just thinking of it as an architect spatially, is that it's it's a welcoming, safe, inviting place to mm -hmm. be. It's got natural light. It's got uh, an openness that is comfortable, and uh, it just it seems like a it's going to be a great place to spend time. Whether mm -hmm. it's curled up by the by the window reading a book or engaging yeah. in one of the many programs that we have. Yeah, well, and I think we've heard, um, not to jump in, but mm -hmm. over the course of the feasibility study and the, the schematic design, we had a lot of public input. Mm -hmm. And so I think the design's been very much influenced by what the community is asking for. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. welcoming open space, uh, more more space for our teens, for our children, and for our adults. We have a very high um, usage from senior citizens. Mm -hmm. People come and, and so we have some areas today in the current building where you can sit comfortably and read, um, but not nearly as many as we, as we want to have. So, uh, so I think it's really, the, it's, it's the design is really what the community has, has been telling us they want. Yeah, so I think we mentioned that we've had a number of community forums, and those actually go back to when we started the feasibility mm -hmm. study. So mm -hmm. we, ju we just had our sixth community forum, uh, and we also talked about the surveys that we get electronically. But we also have had a number of meetings, and I think it's, it's, over 30 at this point, no, I've we're stopped 50, counting, I think. Uh, where we meet with individual groups. So we've met with the veterans a number of times. We've met with the Historical Society, uh, the Watershed Group, uh, just over, over, who am I, I mean, so many. Conservation acres, planning, so those are community groups, uh, but key stakeholders, the Garden Club, the right. Senior Center, to make sure we were getting their input and needs. Mm -hmm. IT and infrastructure for the town. I mean, just more groups than you probably even know about. But, mm -hmm. and uh, from those, we, we heard about some very specific uh, information that people wanted and, and uh, aspects and amenities. So, uh, for instance, you know, having all the children's uh, activities in one space. Mm -hmm. um, having some parking for the strollers, I mentioned as well, that you know, to be able to deposit all your gear as a as a young parent, there's there's a lot of gear. <laughs> <laughs> <I remember>. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and you know, I think it took us a little while to realize that with the new high school, uh, that there would be these additional group study rooms that would be required. You know, we're we're kind of going off of the program from the feasibility study and that mm -hmm. had to that mm -hmm. had to shift and adapt to the changes since then uh, we've also had heard a, a clear uh, interest in having a very flexible meeting space that could be used after after hours so mm -hmm. the way the building mm -hmm. is designed is that the bathrooms and the meeting room spaces uh, can be closed off there's a wall that can separate them so it isn't a strain on on the personnel, um, uh, the librarians mm -hmm. in, the, in the library, uh, they can be used after hours, and uh, and it can be it treated acoustically, which is what we're planning to do, so that there can be some performances, uh, musical performances, and others. Uh, so we've we've really taken these these uh, interests and these uh, really great points that people have brought up and and incorporated the specificity of those needs into the into the design. So ro rolling forward, are, are we in, into a relatively fixed design at this point based mm -hmm. on that community input, or is there still community input that's being filtered into the... the, the that's a great question, because uh, obviously we are gonna have this time frame where mm -hmm. we're fundraising. Um, so in, in a couple years, are there gonna be some changes within mm -hmm. that? So 
Well, the next stage would be, once the funding was approved, would be for design development. So there's still some time to, to make some changes there. Uh, the, the schematic design was to establish a budget and, and cost. Um, the design development stage is just advances those designs, mm -hmm. and then you go into a construction document phase where you know, you're really getting into the weeds of how it's going to be built, and then you're building it. So, so there is time to be able to make adjustments okay. at this point, and, and, um, but we also feel like we're in a pretty mm -hmm. good place mm -hmm. for, for schematic design. It, it does sound like it. Yeah. So, so Kathy, would it be worth talking a little bit about sort of the history of how we got here? Because, yeah, happy because to. I, I know that we have a, a well-used library facility, but it's very old and, and it's sort yeah. of beyond capacity. Yeah, no, it is. And I think um, we, I think the, the first uh, time that the library was put on a list for replacement or material renovation was back in the, in the 1990s. Oh, gosh. And so through the 90s, through the 2000s, through the 2010, the library has continued to be one of the facilities we've noted in town as needing some serious attention. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not only from the library trustees, but from the community and the mega group, the financial task force. Mm -hmm. So from the financial task force, one work that was completed in 2014, it's the last remaining building that needs uh, to attention. And so the, the issues with the building are twofold. They're structural. Uh, but they're, they're also space, and, yeah. and, the, and you know, the, the needs of a 21st century library are very different than what uh, a library designed in 1965. Yeah. So it's one of the oldest buildings in town, and it's one of the most heavily used. We average almost 1,000 unique visitors a day, mm -hmm. uh, and we know that because we're, we're required by the state to count the number of people that visit. This is people physically coming in the physically door. Physically coming in. Not people who are going through the parking lot and dropping off books. <laughs> or dropping uh, but, off But kids. actually <laughs> coming in. Um, and, and so, you know, I think we have things out there on the website that folks can take a look at and get more details. But, but essentially, the feasibility study completed in 2017 said that the best option for the town was a new building. That we, you know, renovation or renovation addition would be more expensive or equally as expensive mm -hmm. and not give us the space that we need. So, so that's actually a very important point because, because I think you've, you've said before that, 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 that the, the roof is carrying loads yep. that yep. are beyond what it was designed for. The, right. the floors and the walls are all carrying loads beyond what they were designed for. And you know, at some point, you know, if you if you move far enough out in time, as we have, right. um, you know, there there is some risk associated with that. Yeah, and, well, and it, you know, that's that's the balance we as trustees are always trying to navigate through, which is what's the right investment from a health and safety standpoint. Mm -hmm. Um, versus what's the right investment for uh, taxpayer dollars, mm -hmm. and and so you know really the to put money into a building that won't meet we could shore up from an infrastructure but doesn't meet our space needs is really why we're on this path for a new building. Um, and, and some some of some of some of the expense that that would be needed to try to shore up the existing absolutely. building if the town were to go down that road. I mean, it sort of turns into cascading expenses that, that, that begin to raise the question, and, and in fact, do raise the question of, right. of you know, whether it's time, and, and it, it does seem to be definitely time to move to a new facility. Absolutely, and I think, so you know, we are not up to code for many of the core systems within the building, whether it's fire, HVAC, the roof, the electrical. That's not unusual uh, in a building th th of our age, but the, the challenge is once something fails, if the fire system were to fail, then we would have to go in and make those repairs and bring that up to code. Mm -hmm. and, and likely in an old building, as and many of us know from our own home repairs, it's once you get in there, what else happens? What else would we be obligated to do? We're not ADA compatible, so there are real challenges for anybody with mobility 
um, restrictions to navigate the library. And we're a community that, that values respect and inclusion, mm -hmm. and we're not meeting those needs. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that the trustees feel pretty strongly about it should be a, a welcome opening place for all that Absolutely. came through in the building design. Mm -hmm. um, where, you know, look at what's happening with the schools. We're mm -hmm. busting at the seams with school age population. All those people are coming to the library. Well, and plus, right, we've added two, two grades to the new high school. Right. So those kids are going to be right across the street, too. So having that amenity right. within walking distance is, is a, a huge asset. Yeah, so exactly. we've got to accommodate for those additional yeah. young adults. So yeah. I think uh, one other thing I'll just say is that. Um, you know, as, as a taxpayer in town, um, the library serves everybody. Mm -hmm. So from, from you, know, you know, birth to, to, en to the end. And what we've talked to the school committee about is, yes, they provide a very important service. We all value education. But the library is the wrapper around to the community. So we have story uh, time for for a zero to eight, 18 months old or a three year old. We're offering English as a second language um, uh, conversation groups. We are a, a haven for seniors in the, in the summertime for, for air conditioning. So we really serve everybody. And, 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 and the, the, the kids too, both in the current high school as well as other grades, they're making use of that space for, Absolutely. for, for studying, for you know, for access to the, the books, doing research. Um, so it, it, it really is, as you say, um, sort yeah. of a, a full service. It is, um, it is. Well, yeah. and one thing I just want to add, this one number that just always gets me is that we have over 300 programs. So you were talking about how the library is not of, you know, 1965 in right. terms of uh, its use anymore. The programming is just exploded, and you need space for that. And it and it's it's a wealth of of information and resources and knowledge. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we we talk a lot about tenth best circulating library mm -hmm. in in the state of Massachusetts. And so what that means is that people are checking out materials. So we have high utilization of our printed and electronic materials. People are using e-books much mm -hmm. more. You're a Kindle reader, we know. Um, <laughs> but but, I, but, but, you but use, the library is important in our Right. <laughs> well, but, but we saw, I think, last year a 30% increase in our you know, electronic media. Mm -hmm. But we also saw an increase in people attending. Mm -hmm. So to Claire's point, the programs, people are using the library differently in today's day and age. So yes, e-materials are critically important, but uh, people are still coming to the library. Um, Kathy, can we talk a little bit about um, budget, the project budget? Um, sure. Uh, you know, I think we had shared this with folks last week. Uh, we have looked at what our all-in cost for the project would be in starting in 2024. So and, the, and all by all in cost we mean this this is this this is this isn't just the construction cost but this correct. is the furniture furniture and, equipment temporary location mm -hmm. the movement out and in and so that's a, it's, that's a it's, good point it's the all in costs and so that's coming in at just over thirty five million okay as we have talked we're going to look at private fundraising as much as possible we've also looked at alternative funding sources that might be available. So we've talked about are there potential components that would qualify for a CPA grant, the historic room, the veterans, some of the gardens that, that Claire spoke about. Mm -hmm. and, and if people know about any uh, other funding sources, cultural council and the like, we're eager to explore those so that we can defray the overall cost to the taxpayers. So now I, I know that you've talked a lot about this in various community forums as well as at, at town meeting, mm -hmm. but for those who haven't haven't been there, what 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 are sort of the stages in the process going forward? So uh, we'll be in a fundraising stage now. We'll be using these materials, the terrific renderings by Odenzello, uh, to 
allow people to envision what it's going to be, right? That's, that's the point of these, these renderings, to, so people can put themselves in that space, in mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. young adult room, in the children's wing of the library, uh, and, in, and picture that. So uh, th this will be a, a fundraising stage, and we can have Brad talk a little bit about that. Uh, but then there will be a, de a debt exclusion vote. So, so what, when would that likely, when, when would that likely happen? So we are targeting November of 2022 for okay. that, and then that would mean uh, that the project would be under construction in uh, 2024. And and the size of that debt ex exclusion um, would depend on on the success of the fundraising effort. That's right? correct. Right. And so 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 maybe. Turning to what's next, um, and and you, Brad, and, and 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 Kathy, if we could talk a little bit about, you know, what what are, you know, what what we're doing in terms of fundraising and help, helping mm -hmm. to make sure that this happens in as cost efficient a way as possible right. for the town. Right. Well, as Claire um, mentioned, we're now entering into the fundraising phase of mm -hmm. this, and as uh, someone who's had, um, you know, a career in fundraising. Um, you always look for a great cause. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just makes our job easy. And n knowing that you have a foundation to build on, when you're going out and asking people to give their philanthropic dollars, um, which is a very personal choice, mm -hmm. and it's something that it, it, you know, people are, are committed to and they make long-term life decisions about, to know that we have a project that has um, been so long in the making and is, mm -hmm. is been so thoughtful and so inclusive of the community gives um, those of us who are going to be out there asking great comfort, right? That we have this foundation to build on. That we don't have to think, well, what if this or what if that? Those things have, these guys have done an amazing job. Not just these guys, but this, this whole community, the library community that we've discussed. So um, that's a, you know, going forward, we are now building a fundraising um, organization of volunteers, mm -hmm. and we want to. I want to make that point um, that we all have other, you know, very busy lives. But this is important to us, mm -hmm. um, and we're we're doing this from the ground up. Nothing like this has happened in mm -hmm. Belmont to this scale before. We're trying to raise millions of dollars to help alleviate the burden on the taxpayer, and we take that very seriously. Um, but we don't really know. We don't have a pool of givers or donors from the last campaign we can go to and say, could you give us 10% more? Sure. We're making this up mm -hmm. as you know, right now. So um, we would require, or we would love it if people could be a little bit patient with us <laughs> as we put together this, but we want to give everyone in the community the opportunity to give at a level that's comfortable to them. And for some people, that might be $5. And for some other people, it might be $5 million. Um, but we need to uh, be out there and talk about this and make people aware of, of the issue and how they can um, eventually become involved um, so that people can then say, yes, this is, Belmont is important to, to me and my family, and the library is an integral part of Belmont. Mm -hmm. And without Bel Belmont, without a library, it would be a lesser place. Mm -hmm. And that's personally what concerns me when I hear Kathy talk about the infrastructure of the current building. That we're we're you know a small way, some mishap away from not being able to fulfill mm -hmm. the you know, the role that the library has fulfilled for so long. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I, I think about when I hear Kathy talk is that um, in the common, and we have to as fundraisers overcome the idea that well libraries were you know a place to store books and only right. you get books right. and, and who needs books because we all have a phone, we all have an iPad, who needs that? But when we realize that the library is not just what it was in 1950 and 60 and 70, but it's a whole new thing and it's actually growing mm -hmm. and it's kind of counterintuitive. The impact of the library and the usage is actually growing. So if people really think about the library, it, the role in their family, what it does for them, we think that they will be really excited to now have this chance to invest in it and, and make a difference for, for their family and for generations to come. Yeah. Um, All really good points. <laughs> right. Well, and I think you know, when we talk about where we're going next, so as, as much work as we have been doing mm -hmm. and 
having the feasibility and the schematic design, which we've had tremendous yeah. input to. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've ha even had people come up to me in the last week and say, what? What's this about a new library project? So I think really the next six months or so, and, and even beyond that, we mm -hmm. have a continued um, obligation and desire to educate the community, okay. make them aware of, of, of where we are, um, the fabulous work from the schematic design, the work of the foundation, the challenges of the current building, but, but celebrate the use of it. Really mm -hmm. make people aware of the story that we're telling here today. And so we will do that collaboratively. We do that as a, as a, as a community group working together. Uh, and so we'll focus on that to make sure that everybody has a chance to understand where we are, know how they can participate and, and, and be engaged and donate. Uh, so I, I think we have not only the beginning of the fundraising, but the continuation of education and awareness and the community about what the library does, what our needs are, and how they can help uh, advance our, our project. So there will be more opportunities, I think you're saying, for yep. people to come and learn more about the project yes. and, and also get involved in the project in uh, some yeah. capacity. Yep. Uh, we'll be having office hours, we're mm -hmm. calling them. So monthly, uh, we'll be setting up times for people to come in, and not just in the library, but also at the Beach Street Center and other locations in town so that people can approach us and say, I had this question about this or that, the mm -hmm. other thing, and we can we can talk to them one-on-one uh, -on -one or in groups. So yeah. there's, there's going to be quite a process of um, education and awareness, as Kathy mentioned. So, so what is the best way for people to get involved? We have a website. It's the BelmontLibraryProject.com website. Okay. And uh, so that's one way to reach out. All the documents from all the forums are, are located in that one place. Uh, so it's easy to access that and even things like the feasibility yeah. uh, report and the structural report uh, documenting some of these issues. So that's one way to, to reach out. We also mm -hmm. have, when we have our uh, building committee meetings, they're, they're open to the public, obviously. And, and, and people are encouraged it. to and attend. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of people attend, which mm -hmm. has been really helpful. Uh, and then reaching out to the foundation. I mean, but there, yeah. there are many venues. So in fundraising is not just about writing a check or putting a dollar in, in, a, in a pot. Um, it, it, Belmont is filled with people who have extraordinary capabilities. And um, many of those could help us. So if people think about what they do, they want to get involved and think about what they do, um, you can go to the Belmont Library Foundation website and, and communicate with, t uh, contact us and, mm -hmm. and jot us a little note about how you think you might be able to be involved. Mm -hmm. But we could, if you're an event planner, we could use that. If you are, um, you know, if you, if you have a, a group of friends that you would think would like to be, to know more about it, we'd be happy to come and, and um, if you want to have a, a house party or something, okay. um, we'd be happy to come and, and talk. Um, so there are any, any number of ways um, to help us get the message out, to be involved um, from, you know, so I'll, I'll just leave it at that. But um, we, we are, as we're kind of creating this, we're very open to, uh, receptive to people um, and their, their ideas. Okay, we're, we're, we're nearing the time when we have to wrap up. Um, um, is, are, do you have any sort of closing thoughts about, um, the, about the project? Um, yeah. I wanted to mention a little bit more about sustainability oh, goals sure. because we didn't, we touched on that, but, but it's such an incredible, um, important piece that has been driving this project. Mm -hmm. And it started with a process. Mm -hmm. uh, the engineers and, and architects, the design team have incorporated a, a a sustainability engineer on their project team. Uh, we have two individuals on the building committee who mm -hmm. are also professionals uh, in our daily life mm -hmm. uh, in sustainability. Okay. Uh, so that's that's the baseline. Mm -hmm. That's our starting point. And then from there, we we designed a building that is uh, all electric building, so no fossil fuels are being used at all. Uh, there are solar panels on the roof. We have resiliency uh, uh, foundations sort of built into the project, which means that all the building systems are put high up in the building. So if there is flooding, they don't get destroyed, mm -hmm. right? 
Um, there's flooding capability on the lands within the landscape. Mm -hmm. uh, we we've reduced. I know I'm sort of shotgunning these, but yeah. we've reduced the asphalt. We've got rain gardens. We've got a green roof. We've got native plants. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just. Mm -hmm. And then the the building envelope, which means the exterior walls and the roof, are all very highly uh, efficient um, systems. So. So, so zero net energy is 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 something and that that, that, that many yes. many in the community um, definitely are interested in, yeah. and and you're designing around that. We mm -hmm. are. We did a zero net energy study. I thank you for reminding me. Mm -hmm. I knew there was more, uh, and and uh, the building will be Z and E ready. So that's um, great. And we've come at it from a wellness point of view yeah. of having natural light. So it just it's chocked full of. Uh, very sustainable features that it, that it's like it's gonna be a hundred year building so we need to be able to plan for the future yeah yeah it's very exciting I, I think um, it's really the building that that will meet Belmont's needs uh, one thing we didn't touch on and a question we often get is about mm -hmm. a grant a mm -hmm. state grant and um, and so there is there is not a grant that we can apply to uh, the last grant, there are 17 communities that are waiting for mm -hmm. funding. Uh, it is expected that the funding, those buildings will get funded maybe by 2033. Uh, if there's a new grant round, maybe there's those new communities start to get funded in 2035. Um, so so it, 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 waiting isn't an option. Waiting is not so. an option. And, and I think the, one of the bigger issues is that with those state monies come obligations. Mm -hmm. And we would be building a library that they want us to build, not the library that Belmont wants. So this is the design that Belmont wants, that Belmont has influenced. Mm -hmm. You know, as Claire's point, it's anticipated the needs of the community. Sustainability is important, wellness. It's on the site that we want it to be. We've also been mindful of the cost to operate that building, which is why it's a two-story building from a site line mm -hmm. perspective. Uh, that's important for us as well because it will be a 100-year old building. And we've built features in that are flexible and mobile because who can anticipate what the space needs and utilization will be in 50 years? But we've, we've looked ahead and tried to design that into the, the, the building, and we're very excited about it. I think the time is now, uh, and we'd love people to get involved. Uh, it will take a village. We, we want everybody to be involved and feel like it's their library um, as much as it is ours. Well, thank you so much, and um, I, I, I appreciate your being on the program, and, and I look forward to continuing the conversation. We do as well. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much. Thank for you. Having Thanks us. for having us. Okay. Thank you so much.